tomorrow, the people of California can send a message to Democrats that the entire nation will hear. If they're successful in this quest, they can recall Governor Gavin Newsom and put a new Republican governor in his place. This is huge. It could be wildly historic. It's an important quest, not just for the people of the Golden State, but for America. For decades, California has been the incubator of radicalism. What starts in California never stays in California. Just look at gun laws there. California has some of the most extreme gun control laws in the nation. You got magazine capacity limits, universal background checks, even limits on how many guns you can purchase in a month. All policies that are now being pushed across America. They were born and bred in California. San Francisco just launched a program to literally pay criminals not to commit crimes. Seriously, 300 bucks a month if you promise to engage with the community, whatever the heck that means. And don't forget, California is the homeless capital of the world because of its tolerance for drug use, criminality, and even its refusal to outlaw those just living on the streets. The homeless rush to California because of all of this. So what has happened? All of this liberal craziness spreads across the country like a California wildfire. So Democrats are coming out in full force, trying to scare their base into keeping their failed, disgraceful Governor Gavin Newsom. It's imperative that does not happen, which is why it is so important for people to see what actually goes on in California. So over the weekend, I had a chance to visit Los Angeles, and a Los Angeles police sergeant, Veronica Saucedo, took me on a ride along to see, well, some of the worst L.A. has to offer. So, go figure, we get to go out for our first call of the day here with the LAPD, and it happens to be a drug overdose simply on the sidewalk, and it's a Saturday afternoon in the middle of the day. So, Sergeant, this is pretty common, isn't it? Very common, very common. We get a lot of these, I'd say, you know, anywhere from four to six a day. And you know what's amazing? I mean, people are literally just dying on the streets on a Saturday afternoon. This could all be prevented, couldn't it? Yeah, it's a drug problem. It could absolutely be prevented. And so while Mayor Garcetti wants to focus on COVID deaths, they ought to be focusing on the drugs and homeless problem in this city that literally has officers responding to something like this six times a day. Six times a day, someone's kid dies because of drugs and they're worried about COVID in this city more than anything else. So as we drive through here, I see tents everywhere but then every now and then there's a place where it's it's clean which tells me it could be enforced i, I do believe that there are special areas and sections that that do get some increased enforcement don't have enough officers working our deployment could be uh increased so that we can actually do more work and uh if laws were able to be enforced throughout that would benefit the community if you were given the capability that you guys could clean up this mess pretty quickly? I absolutely believe if we were given the right amount of resources and the support, we could keep the streets clean and we can definitely keep the citizens of Los Angeles safer. You know, I see videos sometimes, old ladies getting beat up by homeless people. Not old people, just regular people smacked in the face. How common is that? Pretty common, pretty common. Unfortunately, we have a lot of uh, People running rampant uh, under the influence of drugs and various narcotics and addicted to drugs and, and it affects their behavior, it affects their judgment, um, common sense, and, and it certainly increases the violent behavior. And you get rarely get shoplifting calls. That, yeah, rarely. <laughs> and that's not because there's no shoplifting? No, it's because shoplifting has literally been removed as, as a crime. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing to me to see this and think this is an American city. And, and some of the areas we drove through, it, it looks like a third world country. Yes. It's sad. It's really disheartening and it's sad because I, I grew up in the city of Los Angeles and within the past 10 years, this has just increased tremendously and, uh, it's, this type of behavior has been enabled. The drug use has just multiplied. You know, we're in L.A. today. We could be in Detroit tomorrow. We could be in Baltimore the next day. We could be in Washington, D.C. You go through liberal city to liberal city to liberal city. 
And uh, basically, this is the situation you get. Absolutely really sad to see L.A. be destroyed like that because of liberal leadership. So if we can stop, right, the constant barrage of ridiculousness in California coming from those liberal leaders like Gavin Newsom, we can stop the insanity, the oppression, the tyranny coming out of that state. We can stop the spread of radicalism across America. The ouster of the king of Khan, Governor Gavin Newsom, would send a strong message to leftists everywhere that if people can wake up in California, they can wake up across America. If Gavin Newsom is recalled and California seats a Republican governor, the political climate across America instantly changes. Here's why. The Democrats deal in fear. They use that fear to control you. The moment a Republican takes the governor's mansion in California, the fear flips. Reality sets in that America is on the brink. That is the reality. People are waking up to it, and we are fed up with the liberal lunacy, and we are not going to take it anymore. That's what tomorrow's recall is all about. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.